Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 4 The Last Revelation, Zelda is 115 speaking and let me welcome you to the present day Egypt. Actually 15 years have passed since Lara and Von Kroy went their separate ways after he um, I guess successfully retrieved the iris or the iris retrieved him, better to put it. And the crazy thing is that by Egypt present day, I mean 1999, the day the game was released, at the turn of the millennium, which at the time of me publishing and uploading this video is somewhere between 21 and 22 years. That's absolutely insane to think about and I think, you know, it makes some of us feel old but at the same time makes us appreciate the graphics, it really does. Now, I want to talk so much about what happened in the uh, cutscene before and in, in the sort of cool FMV when Lara and um, her trusty guide were approaching this cavern, this uh, tomb of Seth. Uh, however, I do need to get on, I babble too much and I would like you I would like to basically show you the new stuff, new gadgets we have, since Lara is a grown-up and has license to use them. So, first of all, let me open up the inventory screen, and there they are, the trusty pistols. You might have already noticed them on Lara's holster. What's really cool about them is that they look a bit different. They actually look like desert eagles, like hand cannons, and this would be in accordance with some of the promotional artworks used for Tomb Raider 4, where Lara is literally just holding a hand cannon in her hand. Now, dual-wielding hand cannons is very much unrealistic. Those things just pack a punch. I usually use for just delivering a few really powerful shots, then they usually break, unless they break your arm. Nevertheless, this is Lara we are talking about, but I would still like to prefer she's actually using her trusty 9mm guns, you know? And I also appreciate the effort that the developers went into to actually show, look, they are using ammunition, it just happens to be unlimited, and, you know, they used a couple of 3D objects, all very cute. Now, furthermore, we have the binoculars, and I'm so excited about these, the first time they're in the franchise, and I'm gonna show you how to use them straight away, don't worry, we are gonna get to the gun soon. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is no hotkey for them. Uh, let me actually make a quick experiment. Number one should be, yep, the pistols. Number two will be shotgun, number three will be Uzis. I can't quite remember the other few weapons, what their hotkeys are. There are hotkeys for health packs, but yeah, there is currently no ho uh, hotkey for binoculars, which is a shame. So, you also can't be moving when trying to binoculars. See, nothing happened. You have to be completely still. There we go. So, you get this kind of cool uh, edge edges of the screen, and they are, you know, not just to perhaps give you a bit more immersion. You can actually press the action key and they will illuminate dark areas. See, we can't really see the corner on the left, but now we can. And I can't turn any more left because of Lara's positioning, so you actually have to turn her manually. You can't do 360 with uh, the binoculars. Still, they're great in case you run out of flares or do want to just start firing your guns to illuminate an area. And they actually happen to do what binoculars are supposed to do. They allow you to zoom in. This is so amazing, and look how far the light can be cast. This is truly wonderful. You can also zoom out using the flare hotkey. However, I don't know why this does not work for me on this particular PC version on my particular laptop. I'm pressing the flare hotkey and nothing happens, I can't zoom out. Now the way you can put the binoculars away is by pressing the draw holster key, like this, in my case spacebar, and the same key is used for drawing your last used weapon. In this case, it can only be pistols. There we see. Very satisfying sound. It didn't change since Tomb Raider 3. And the same can go for shooting mechanics. Now, let's just take a look at the statistics screen here. The admin you used is still zero, coming from previous levels. However, if you press action key with your weapons uh, withdrawn, Lara will fire. And now, if we look at the statistics screen, it shows ammo used too. Even though we didn't technically run out of any ammunition, it still keeps a counter. That is very handy for my statistics video. They pretty much look the same like in previous games, and they make the exactly same sound as they did in Tomb Raider 3 when firing. So, uh, with that said, what you can actually do with guns, you know, Lara doesn't seem to be, you know, aiming, not even at her useful guide over there. Uh, there is so-called manual or auto-targeting in this game. Now, I highly recommend you use automatic, because in case you encounter any enemy, Lara will automatically take aim, and all you have to do and think about is Lara's positioning towards the target, and otherwise just press 
and keep holding or you know individually press the action key for Lara to fire at the enemy. If you choose manual, uh, it's a bit more complicated. Lara will not auto aim and you will have to give her manual input if I'm not mistaken by using the look key. This is very clumsy and I do not recommend it. I'm not even entirely certain in what situations it could be useful. I mean, there will be a couple of situations where we'll be trying aiming in on particular spots on enemies' bodies. Perhaps that's when I'll put it to practice. But until then, let's go to automatic. So that's what I recommend you do. And the really cool thing about the guns is that you can not only holster and unholster them whilst, for example, you know, jumping around. You can also do this whilst running and whilst sprinting even, right? Whatever you do whilst you're sprinting, you can holster, unholster them. And exactly the same kind of thing goes for firing them. Just look at this. This is so cool. Come on. And this, my friends, mid-air roll and firing is an absolutely essential combat trick that I would really recommend you teach early on because this is kind of what turns a not particularly good combat system of Tomb Raider 1 into quite enjoyable and excellent one in Tomb Raider 2 because from that game onward you can do mid-air rolls whilst firing. Okay, and finally, you can also do this from a crouching position. Now, remember how I said you actually, in order from prone position to go back into a crouch, you have to find an item to pick up, like the flares over here? Well, you can also press the holster unholster key once, and Lara will go into a crouch no matter where you are located, right? So, for example, here, there we go. And if you press it again, you can fire whilst being prone and even turn whilst firing. Now there might be a couple of situations where you might want to hit your enemies into the kneecaps or whatever the case. This is enormously useful for that. Uh, I'm curious if such situ situation will be present in Tomb Raider 4. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. And for the final part, I already mentioned them, but there they are. We are starting in our inventory with three flares. Now the really interesting thing is that if you pick up just one package of flares, like over here, uh, each contains 12 flares, so now we have overall 15. I'm not sure why we are starting with three, but there you go. I think something similar happened in previous Tomb Raiders. We started like out with like uh, two shotgun shells and two flares, or some absolutely strange, bizarre quantity like that. Nevertheless, this is where we came from, where we dropped uh, <laughs> a buff into this pit area where Lara took away her cape, and I guess it was supposed to be a big revelation that this is indeed Lara Croft, but come on, we all already knew. And, sorry, just back to the inventory, we have four small medipacks and one large medipack. So now they're called medipacks, not health packs, but I prefer health packs, nevertheless. Uh, mind you, these are carried over from the two tutorial levels we just finished, so the number of goodies you pick up there definitely has impact for the rest of the game. Your inventory does not get reset, Lara keeps them handy in uh, some dusty locker somewhere for 15 years and then recovers them on her way to Egypt, because why not? So that's it. And uh, yeah, let, let me actually talk uh, about this guy over here. So on one of the walkthroughs I found online, the Tomb Raider's Traveler's Guide, I found that his name is apparently supposed to be Ahmed. I'm not really sure where the information is coming from, but it's a common name. So, you know, even if it's not his real name, we can use it as a placeholder. So I'm going to refer to him as it's Ahmed or Ahmed. I think the H there is uh, supposed to be pronounced. Sorry if I'm doing it wrongly. And... Um, this guy will be quite essential to this level. He will trigger traps, open doors for us, light torches, and even fight enemies. Yes, but uh, you know how I feel about kills. I want us to get them, you know? So, unlike in the situation with Bors and Von Kroy and his knife, this time we are able to defend ourselves, so I want to snag the kills. And what we picked up there in, you know, after the flash, like the third pickup in since the game really started, is a shotgun. It's similar to the jungle level in Tomb Raider 3, right? Where the shotgun is pretty much right underneath your feet at the very beginning before the first slide. So, each new weapon you pick up, just like in previous games, comes preloaded with one ammunition pack. However, you might see two ammunition packs displayed here, right? So, uh, one shotgun ammunition pack contains six shotgun shells, not two like in previous games. It's very generous, and the shotgun is not really weaker, which is great. 
Uh, the game is overall incredibly generous with shotgun shells, it can pretty much become our main weapon to use and I don't think we're gonna run out anytime soon. Nevertheless, let me explain the ammunition mechanic. So, with pistols, we have no ammunition choice. It's, you know, pre-selected for us. It's still displayed there, just as a sort of extra immersion and detail. But with shotgun, you can actually scroll down, choose ammo, and choose the white shot ammo, of which we, well, currently possess zero. Now, white shot ammunition is much more rare than shotgun ammunition. However, if you'd ask me why should you ever use white shot ammunition, I would not be able to answer, and this frustrates me to no end. Later on, once we'll have a decent amount of white shot ammunition and normal ammunition, I will do some testing and some comparison of what the effects of each are, but right now, at this point, even searching online, I was not able to find any information what white shot actually does. There is a theory that it scatters the pellets more, which um, I'm not really sure why you'd want that, why it's a good thing, why is it in any shape or form gonna kill your enemies earlier than normal shotgun ammunition. Wasn't even sure this game's engine is capable of that, so as I said before, there might be some, well, there are some enemies where you need to hit particular places on their body. Maybe white shot is a bit more useful for that, because it doesn't matter how much damage you deal as long as you hit that part. So it might be useful for increasing our chances of hitting something. But otherwise, you know, there really is no point that I'm aware of. However, I will do some thorough testing as soon as we reach a more advanced stage of this game, and I'll definitely let you know. For, uh, for now, let's rejoice that we have the shotgun with a really, really lovely sound, the same as in Tomb Raider 3, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm going to use it shortly. Don't worry, I'm not going to be stingy with ammunition in these games. I never am. Come on. Okay. So, and mind you, the hotkey for shotgun is number two, and the first time you draw it and put it back, Lara will always carry it on her back. So, it really feels nice to be equipped like that. Now, Ahmed is waiting for us there, so let's make a few steps, and so will he. And you might have already seen it, those keen-eyed amongst you, uh, another ammunition box of shotgun shells. So, as I said, one box gives us six shots, so we had six, by now we should have twelve, exactly. And this is how you can keep track of ammunition. Now, uh, funny thing, let me just check the ammo used. <laughs> 36. This shows us how many shots we fired with the pistols. And I'm going to do the same comparison once we use shotgun for the first time. But first of all, there is another inconspicuous bit over here. With a red scorpion. Now, don't worry, even though these guys look really creepy and poisonous, they are not. They deal absolutely minimal damage. They're pretty much the red's equivalent of previous Tomb Raiders. Nothing to be worried about too much and you get to pick up a large health pack, always good. However, there are some, uh, they're pretty much identical looking, however, black colored scorpions later on in the game, and those will be poisonous, and I'll tell you more about poison once we'll reach that point. If you're interested in all the kills, even though the game doesn't track them, but, well, I will, you know, feel free to enter these pits, and the moment you do, they will spawn. It's supposed to be a trap, or a punishment for dropping in, I guess, but you know how bloodthirsty I am, for me it's a reward. Now, I would recommend you get a shotgun ready, but first of all, let's let Ahmed get a bit of a head start, because an enemy will spawn as soon as we cross this, this threshold, and I don't want Ahmed to land the kill. I want Lara to do it. Okay, he's quite deadly with his torch. It's a doggo! Oh, Well, you heard me use the term dog hunting if you watched my previous playthroughs, and uh, yeah, shotgun happens to be one of the best weapons for dogs, and this is why. And let's just check the uh, ammo used. We are at 61. Oh no, we kill those scorpions. You know what? Let's fire one shot. Just to have a proof, 62. Okay, so a shot with a shotgun. Uh, counts as uh, one ammunition shot, whereas uh, with pistols it's two. Okay, and it takes sort of like three presses of the control key or holding the control key to kill one scorpion, but you know, Lara's accuracy is not actually perfect, even with auto aim. Sometimes she might miss and you might require more. Okay, so I'm wondering what the dogs are doing here. Well, um, I don't know, but it's quite interesting that they had red eyes, if you notice. We're gonna see a couple more of them. 
so you can take a better look they look kind of mangy not particularly well built or anything like that but uh, yeah the red eyes worry me a little by the way secret <laughs> yeah this really reminds me of the first secret in the caves level although that was a bit more challenging because of the slippery slope now it's just a very straightforward thing and a large health bag on this naturally formed altar I guess but one thing I didn't actually show you are flares, and I think this is the perfect opportunity. So, what do flares even work like, you know? So, th there are a couple of things you can do. You can either go to your inventory screen and obviously press use, or you can use your hotkey. The same one that was supposed to zoom out using binoculars, but doesn't work for me. Anyway, I'm gonna press the hotkey, and there we go. And we can actually see the small health pack hidden in this corner. And I absolutely love this sort of green light that uh, the flares give out in Tomb Raider 4 and also 5, by the way. Once you have drawn a flare, you can't really, you know, have flares and your weapons drawn. So Lara will unfortunately let go. But you can re-pick it up. Unfortunately, the animation is very slow like in previous game. And using the flare key again, you get to throw it. And this can be useful for a couple of reasons, because um, you might want to throw it into a dark pit before actually making the drop or jump into there, just to see if it's safe, you know, and for these purposes it's very handy. Anyway, again, this game is very flares generous, and especially in PS1 version that's a really great gift, because, oh, it's a dark game. <laughs> Notice how the block just goes down the moment we approach. Yeah, Lara's aim's not really good here, is it? But, turn back because another scorpion spawns. So these guys came from two corners, right? And again, let's just use the flare hotkey and be awarded by more flares. Oh, I love this so much. Okay, the green light, I don't know, there's something very soothing about it. Almost feel like some sort of healing mist, you know? Just, just being surrounded by the green light should restore our health. Well, technically poison us, I guess. <laughs> okay, so, couple of things in this beautiful um, ancient Egyptian representation of a starry sky. Uh, we need to leave this door. For this we need to trigger sand mechanism and part of the mechanism is uh, triggered in a small little hole over here. Lara almost threw flare into that. Cool. Now, so you might be wondering, okay, so this is some new mechanic, right? We go to hole, we press the control key, but nothing happens. See, this is really vicious. The surface underneath this one is uneven, therefore Lara cannot interact with it. It's just there to create a sense of symmetry in the room, I guess. But if you find one with an even surface and press the action key, Lara will reach in and pull something out, either a mechanism, some reward, or sometimes the so-called infamous death beetles, okay? This time we're awarded with large health pack, and I'm kind of amazed. I'd be afraid to put my arm in there thinking I might not, you know, pull it out ever again. <laughs> and yeah, so don't do it uh, to this hole where the sort of block disappeared, shrunk into, uh, into the ceiling, because you will trigger a mechanism that will allow you to proceed, but make uh, retrieving the second secret of the level impossible. So instead, let's go into this beautifully decorated room. I mean, literally, I love this level so much. Every room, every encounter, every trip is absolutely gorgeous. And we want to get into the other side, we need more sand. But if you do drop down here, voila, there it is, a small health pack. And in the small corner over there, you will see some shotgun ammunition. So don't dawdle, however, pick up your guns because scorpions are here. Okay. Nicely done, Lara. Thank you very much for cooperating. So, really, this will be missable because once you trigger the mechanism above, um, the sand will fill the room and you will not be able to get it. And sorry, I just went to see adult Lara doing her handstand. Nice. Now, I know it's possible to sprint and cut corners here. It's fairly tricky. Ah, yes. Whew. So rewarding when that works out. Great stuff. So this is the one we left. Uh, and see what I mean? It starts filling up with sand. Now, if you hurry, you can actually see something really cool. Something that, oops, impresses me on a technical level. Okay, see, it works like an elevator. And Lara can actually... <laughs> see, uh, I, I don't know why I find this so fascinating, but I, I was not aware that the engine can pull this off, you know, such instantaneous change in verticality. 
and Lara interacting with her environment, either automatically overcoming the step or you needing to press the control key. I don't know why, but I find that absolutely fascinating. Anyway, two altars here Lara can approach and pick up a goodie with a new animation to Tomb Raider 4, small health pack and a key item, and a beautiful sand mechanism opening the door to the next room. First of all, the key item itself is an eyepiece. So, as the name suggests, it's a piece. We need to find another one, right? So, it's actually a second key item we are after again, and we're gonna do something rather cool and new to the series so far with them. Ah, I love this. And it actually goes through the grate into the room beneath us. This is wonderful. But the door behind us closes, so if you missed any goodies there, uh, you will not be able to retrieve them. The worst case scenario is you missed a shotgun, don't worry, you'll get another chance to get it in this level. Have no fear. <gasps> oh, Ahmed is moving on. Okay, let's not dawdle, because he's gonna do something very important. Stay here, don't move. <sighs> he will actually trigger the mechanism with his torch so you can cross safely, and I tried stepping on every one of these tiles making the jump to these tiles it doesn't matter where you go even though there are a couple of tiles with holes in them it suggests these might be the triggers everything is a trigger of this mechanism so let Ahmed do his thing and you can then safely pick this up the guy is proving to be really useful I mean he wasn't just a guy to this place he saved us a couple of times already this is really great stuff and yet yeah, we again got eyepiece now I'm gonna revisit those in a sec but first of all those keen-eyed observant among you have already seen the rope dangling here. Now you might not be looking forward to the rope, but it's very easy. Well, this particular time, trust me. You only need to step under it, align yourself, start pressing the sprint key and jump at the first opportunity. It will be just enough, well actually just enough, a lot. Lara will cover a lot of space with that one hop. So you don't really even need to spend real time swinging, as long as you use the jump key, not, the con not releasing the control key to get across. And we reached a secret. Don't climb up just yet. Wait for it. See that? That's evil. So there is this rolling um, cylinder going across the room. Okay, roll Lara, roll. Actually, maybe we can safely pick this up. Yes, wonderful. And see, it goes up and down, up and down around this room. Now, we picked up a small health pack. That's not all there is to the secret. We don't need to go back. We can, of course, wait for it again. Okay, now climb up. And I'm going to quickly do a roll and just jump and hold the control key. This is where you want to go without the cylinder hitting you in the head, ideally. Here you can actually climb up relatively safely because the ceiling that it will go across is relatively high. Another pickup, more flares. Very good. Wait for it, okay, go down, and I advise you to make one step forward and a standing jump, and that should be it. You take very small amount of damage, but ooh, that was close. <laughs> we avoid the cylinder completely, which is always good. Our dog hunting continues, and yes, these poor little guys really have red eyes. But see, behind the corner, two more of them are resting, and again, I'm going to show you why shotgun is such an awesome weapon. <laughs> See, not even a scratch on us. It's really, really, really so much fun to kill dogs in Tomb Raider games, which worries me. I don't think it should be fun to kill dogs, but... Well, it's in self-defense. Anywho, let's lie down and ooh, hold that action key. Now, do you see that? Yes. Those... Ah, Lara, please don't. Those are Uzis on the right and on the left a pit with scorpions. Do you see the fire? That's actually... <laughs> Don't worry, you're not gonna be set on fire. That's Ahmed, our faithful guide beneath the... <gasps> oh no, he's killing the scorpions! Oh my god, he killed both scorpions! How did he... Oh. Guys, I will see you back at this spot. Those are supposed to be my kills. Uh, I mean, Lara's. Okay. Time for revenge. Without any thinking, let's drop into the pit before Ahmed will have his way with them. Or with us. I mean, if he's gonna stick the torch in here, shouldn't that... Okay, are they still moving? Oh, we did it. Oh, thank goodness. I'm not gonna let you steal our kills, Ahmed, no matter how hard you try. But, you know, I have to say, good job with the torch. 
seriously, he's so loyal, almost to a fault. Anyway, <laughs> a prize here, the Uzi, well, huh. See, here's the, the damnest thing, Lara picked up one Uzi, and yet when you equip it, she has both of them, and they look completely different. This is the same model of Uzi's S in Tomb Raider 3. Uh, even the sound is the same, however, I'm not gonna fire them. Well, okay, I'm gonna fire once, just to give you an idea and also to check the uh, ammo fired count. So, we have used 164 and it should bring us to 66. Yeah, we have used two pieces of ammunition. There we go. So, it's the same thing as pistols, however, the rate of fire is much better, therefore the DPS is much better. But still, it looks completely different. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, um... You remember what I said about there being plentiful shotgun shells, that's true, but when it comes to Uzi, you might also be used to generosity, and not so much in Tomb Raider 4, surprisingly enough. It will be quite the challenge to even get a uh, thousand bullets at any one point, so uh, yeah, best to save them for much later levels. Now this corridor over here should look very familiar, oops, and okay, there you are. So, oh, so you can make it through closed doors. You sneaky bastard. Okay, nicely done. I'm still amazed he reached that grate and tried to burn those scorpions. I guess they must have been somewhere in the tunnel behind this door where we originally went through. <laughs> ah, that's just too funny. Okay, but back into this room. So basically this is the area with the rope, how we entered. Uh, secret number three. Quite impressive secret, I do have to say. Now, we have picked up two eyepieces. But what we need is I. Now, strangely enough, if you press control here, no inventory opens up. That should already give you a hint something is wrong. However, Lara doesn't say no quite yet. However, if you try to manually put piece here or that one, no. No. same thing. But notice the combined thing. So again, new thing to Tomb Raider 4, which is, uh, well, disappointing, I guess. It's just, it's cool, but it's completely underutilized. You basically get to combine a couple of things in your inventory, which will be mandatory to proceed, and uh, there's one particular weapon upgrade which you can switch in between multiple weapons, but we'll get there uh, at one point. First of all, we need to combine two pieces together, and now, if you press the control key here, the inventory suddenly opens up, that means you have the correct item, it's even auto-selected for you, and there we go. Honestly, I preferred it in older Tomb Raiders, where the correct item was not shown to you directly, so you had to choose the correct one. Remember St. Francis Fall, where you have to identify different guards' keys according to the keyholes and their decorations. Yeah, and unfortunately they streamed it, well, streamlined it a little, just a bit too much assistance. Anyway, behold! Good thing there was the safety rail, Lara would probably plummet through even during the cutscene. Now notice Ahmed, he's running to the alcove over there and we will follow him very shortly. He knows where to go, he's not just a guy, he knows this place through and through. I wonder if he's a Seth worshipper, hmm, well later about that, first of all, Let's bask in the magnificence of this Sphinx's head. Well, I shouldn't refer to it as the Sphinx because it's just the head without the rest of the body, right? So, it could be just representing some pharaoh but uh, or nobleman. But, uh, yeah, I think this is a good opportunity to use the binoculars because I want to tell you what's going on. Our objective in this level, strangely enough, is to enter the tomb of Seth within the Sphinx's mouth, right? Uh, in order to do that, we need to get rid of the large pile of sand over here. To get rid of the large pile of sand over here, we need to trigger a mechanism in the tunnels to our left at the very bottom of this huge cavern, right? In order to trigger the mechanism there, we need to use sands of time, well, timeless sands actually, the opposite of sands of time, a unique uh, pickup that we will find beneath us, directly beneath us. Secondly, in the corner over there, there's a lever which triggers a mechanism in the Sphinx's uh, right ear and in the opposite corner is another secret with goodies directly so the sphinx's head is used to exit the level and also access two secrets which if i'm not mistaken are the only secrets we need yeah we found three we need two more exactly now uh this is a huge structure and it looks way more confusing than it actually is now uh, if you look to the right the opposite of where ahmed went uh you will see just 
fake entrance there literally is nothing there you can't really interact with the hieroglyphics in any way and if you do want to you know do a bit of exploration of what the sphinx looks like covered by sand you can go down safely and use a couple of platforms to do that just please mind the spikes over here yeah there is always a safer way to get down uh, i'm not going to do that because it would be uh well it would waste our time a little we will get there eventually via uh, a staircase so first of all mind the goodies on the sides here another uzi pickup we had i think 28 now we are at 58 so 30 per each pickup the same thing the uzis came preloaded with just like shotgun it's one ammo pickup equivalent and a small health bag over here and without further ado let's uh follow ahmed and we are going to enter this sort of spiral staircase mind you the grate over here will open once we wrap up our business here so we can go down and you can also use the same spiral staircase to go up should you so desire instead if we follow ahmed we enter an area with what seems to be water but don't drop into it because the guy will set it on fire it's an oil in fact oh that was stylish and if you continue down this corridor and just follow these, um, I believe that's Osiris on the left, uh, Osiris hieroglyphics, you will reach another locked crate. This is also the spot where Ahmed wants to go and unfortunately can't pass through. We should see him approaching if we just watch the tunnel. He's taking his time. Ah, there he is. Okay. <laughs> you get the hint of how good the dynamic lighting is because uh, of him holding the torch and he'll just stop there he's gonna be very sad and we don't want Ahmed to be sad he's been very good to us so far so let's open those iron bars this is by the way where we came from I turned left let's turn right into this sickly green poisonous looking corridor for some reason but don't worry on the contrary it just contains a small health pack so it's uh, the good kind of a green glow not the bad kind and using this sort of workaround, we use the area where Ahmed couldn't go. I mean, if the guy would be willing or able to just jump across that small gap, he wouldn't have to stop here. But uh, reasons, I guess. So, hello there. <laughs> if you want, you can get Lara soaked in oil. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you climb out of it, uh, droplets will start falling from her body as if this would be water. Sorry about that, Lara, by the way. This can't be pleasant. Anyway, we need to let him in so he can light it up, because if you take a look above, you will see a couple of strange hieroglyphics, right? Above this room is another room, and we need fire underneath it. We literally need to put the fire under the furnace to keep ourselves warm up there, and I'll show you why in a short while. This can be very confusing. Another crossroads, right? We have four directions to our look. What's going on here? Don't worry. Over here to the right is where we need to go, and at the front and our left, it's actually one closed circuit. Okay, these two corridors are connected, just to not confuse you, and we'll explore them in a short while. First of all, this is the room above the strange hieroglyphics, right? So Ahmed is underneath, he just needs to get in to light it with torch, and behind the grate over here are the timeless sands we need to use to trigger a mechanism to free up our path into the, well, not sphinxes, but uh, Pharaoh's mouth. So, let's trigger the mechanism. I know this doesn't look likely, but this is a lever you can activate using the action key. Lots of these in Tomb Raider 4. Completely new animations. I like. And there we go. See, fire is lit up, and you could always see a gap in the ceiling. These are the gaps, yeah? So why are only some of these hieroglyphics highlighted? By the way, I love the molten lava underneath. I mean, that's not what burning oil should look like, but it's so cool. Wow. It's, uh, it's really simple. Something that me and my brother never figured out back in our day without, you know, dark ages, without internet connection. We didn't know what to do in this room because uh, we tried jumping on all these tiles and the door still didn't open. So here, here's the really tricky thing. You have to jump on all these tiles, but only on these tiles only and within a certain time limit. If you complete all these three conditions, the door on the other side will open. If you should fail for whatever reason, uh, you need to reset it. And I'm going to show you how. So let's say you step here. See the torch over there? It's burning. That means progress. If you try and go here, the second one is lit. If you stub on anything else, the torches are off. OK, 
okay so this means you need to manually reset the mechanism and by the way don't linger on these tiles because one after another they will be set on fire oh see that I already saw some smoke there very dangerous very nasty I don't know how this works I mean there need to be consistent pillars of fire all the way from the ceiling of the room beneath us which makes no sense but it's pretty damn cool cool so we're gonna forgive the game so uh, pulling this lever again will not help actually Lara will even refuse to do so strangely enough if I remember correctly uh, Lara usually p can pull these infinite number of times in Tomb Raider 4 this one in particular not for whatever reason but you might notice that this was the path behind us this is how we entered it closed yet the path to the right open now so we are entering that um, so-called closed circuit uh, I'm not only doing this you know out of the goodness of my heart to show you how to reset the mechanism should you do something wrongly like this and you can already see uh, hear a great opening sound but also in case you miss the shotgun the first time you can get it here a second time however if you already have a shotgun let me demonstrate 11 shots we will now be at 17 see so if you already pick up a weapon you already own uh, you will receive one ammunition pack of said weapon and I really like how they implemented it in Tomb Raider 4 because you still see the actual weapon so you just have this extra bit of information that you know if you would have missed it before this is where you would have rediscovered it uh, this is really something that wasn't the case in previous Tomb Raiders. It would instantaneously be replaced by an ammunition pack. And, you know, especially for us walkthrough uh, recorders or, uh, you know, writers, it's very frustrating to have to test things without certain weapon just to be absolutely sure where it can be repicked up for that extra information. Anywho, we reset it. Now, uh, one thing I would like to advise, be very careful about... Um, even if you think you are making a precision jump, you must be certain Lara is not covering small pocket of air above the wrong tile because it will trigger and we will need to re-reset it. So what I will advise you to do is let's just walk on this one until the torch is lit. Now let's make a diagonal standing jump. Let's make small step back and a jump forward to the side. Maybe step forward is warranted here and forward Lara well done and let's get out of here because I'm worried the eye will set itself on fire I mean I'm not sure I don't think the eye actually does but I don't want to risk it I think it doesn't just to ensure you can safely return to the room or whatever the reason is even though by now if you're standing here you never need to return to the room because you can just pick up the timeless sands and the grate behind you opens and there they are I don't know what it is but I love checking key items in my inventory they're just so gorgeous something Ah, shiny, shinier about them in Tomb Raider 4 and 5 engine. I really like that. Okay, um, now this might be a bit of a surprise, but if you continue down the stairs here, you are in front of uh, the head, right? <laughs> Covered in sand. So this is why I didn't want to descend manually, because we will find ourselves here anyway. Now you get a better look at the sort of spiky areas over here. And just like before on that side, there is another fake entrance here that doesn't really mean or do anything it just confuses the living hell out of me but the one over here is not fake at all this is the round staircase that uh, Ahmed was originally running into and if you just go up a little you will encounter the room full of oil he originally set on fire and just another flight of stairs and you are here at the top so it's really as simple as that but now I want to get down so let me you know just to keep things fresh show you another way of doing it so there are these protruding platforms over here yeah that's not slippery good so we avoided the spikes and if I just do this we should be safely down just like that so multiple ways of scaling the same thing pretty much it can confuse us as newcomers to the level and by the way you need to approach Ahmed he will wait for you he assumes you are approaching him from that staircase even though you're not so uh, the reason is we need to encourage him to walk into this room because it contains a grate that only he can open by looking at it. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, it's just the way it's scripted. Again, this can lead to further confusion. I am not a big fan of such level design. You would be looking for a mechanism normally to open it. <laughs> that face. <laughs> I mean... 
you have to give it to him, he's only a guide and he was fairly brave so far. And it actually makes sense he's using that staircase because it leads all the way up into the entrance from, uh, well, to the cavern with Sphinx's head and that leads to the closed door he already passed by, so yeah. Seeing he has the ability to pass through closed door, I think that choice makes sense for him. Okay, <laughs> but that face... It was worth it. So, clearly there is something written on the hieroglyphics around this door. Let's pretend they're not generic and used everywhere, right? That scared him. And um, I think it leads to the prophecy of uh, the priest Semerket, the priest of Horus, about uh, Seth being imprisoned here. And, well, if you're venturing here and touch things you shouldn't, you can release Seth and bring about pretty much the end of the world, apparently. Kind of makes you wonder what... What did Seth... Uh, go through to be that way you know I always tend to sympathize with the bad guys I always look at the psychology and think about well surely there has to be a reason why you like this unless there's an explanation you've been created born or always have been just pure evil and chaos which I find lazy but there we go anyway um, do you see the grades above again we are gonna use the same trick as before we are gonna fill this room with sand by placing the timeless sands into the statues hands I love this so much. I know the change was instantaneous, but the illusion is still there and it's absolutely gorgeous. And this is just beneath the Sphinx's head. Sorry, uh, the head. Just head. No Sphinx. Just the head. And I have to say, it looks kind of hilarious with that mouth open. You know what? I'm probably gonna make it to the top of the Sphinx's head just to take a look at what it looks like, you know, without all that sand. But first of all, not just sand fell through, also one red scorpion, if I'm not mistaken, the last one in this level. There we go, that's taken care of. So let's get out of here. Oh, oh, okay, thank you, Lara. And yeah, as I was saying, uh, makes me wonder what's up with deities and villains and creatures like Seth, just pure and utterly evil, apparently. And I know that's an absolute simplification, I know there's a lot of jealousy involved to his brother Osiris, unfortunately that's not quite the depth to which Tomb Raider 4 goes. Now, we can go into the fire room like this, but no, we want to get to the top to get a better view of the Sphinx's head, so let's use the same staircase Ahmed did to run away. I mean, I'm kind of relieved he's not here, because he's not gonna kill any more kills away from us. So, yeah, I, I can't really complain about it too much. So, let's see, what do you really look like? Oh. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I was about to say it looks much better than the one in Tomb Raider 3 in the um, London Museum of Ludsgate, but... <laughs> I don't think that mouth should ever have been opened, I mean, oh, it's just hilarious. Anyway, crawling into that mouth, and I said crawling because it's, you know, tight, you actually have to press the crawl key, uh, ends the level. Instead, we are going to pick up the last two secrets of the level. If you remember, one in uh, the head's right ear and the other in the corner over there, but we need to reach even that corner to open the ear. So, again, let me... Um, yeah, I'm looking for a different way to get... Uh, back down just to keep things fresh. So how about this? Am I gonna regret this horribly? Possibly, but that's all good fun, no? Ah, this is not the slippery one, cool. Even if you would know that you are dropping onto the slippery one, by the way, just keep holding the jump key and Lara will literally jump the moment her feet brush up against the surface under her. So it's kind of a safety mechanism you can put in place when you're not sure if the surface beneath you is slippery or not. Okay, and now, wow, that's really inviting. Um, I'd be actually terrified. What if the mouth closes as I'm halfway through and just crushes my spine or something? Like, th these are the thoughts I would always have when interacting with unknown mechanisms. I don't know how Lara does that, really. Okay. So, th yeah, this does genuinely look like a letter. I appreciate that, that it's not just, you know, lazy invisible letter, but a genuine texture which looks climbable. And this is what will actually get us into the very top corner. And then we need to make probably the trickiest jump so far, and it's fairly likely I might even die here. We'll see. Okay. By the way, notice how this is the same lever mechanism like in Cambodia, but the ornaments are different, and they're absolutely gorgeous. I love them so much. Egyptian aesthetics are 
I, I think my favorite in the whole world. There's something about being colorful, but not overdoing it, you know what I mean? Okay, and I remember how blue and yellow, or in this case gold, was my most favorite color combination when I was a kid. Still probably is. Okay, so make sure you do standing jump and after, not before, you press the left arrow key, which means once Lara is already jumping, she will begin tilting, right? If you were to hold it before jumping, she would just do a side flip. You don't want that. So even the order in which you press keys is very, very important. But sorry, this is not a tutorial. By now you're definitely seasoned and you know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, this is a very awkward angle jump and we don't want to overdo it because we'll end up on the slippery surface. So let me tilt Lara like this. Maybe even make another step back, side step. Okay, I think she should definitely be able to do this with a standing jump but also remember after you press the jump forward start tilting to the left like this who just made it barely okay so there we go uh, let me light up another flare here why not I want you to see what we're picking up even though you know I appreciate uh, the mechanic of these items being visible in the corner of the screen when picking them up is back okay and another dark corner and there's something so satisfying about sliding down its um, headdress, so I I want to do this. Yeah, man. It feels so wrong, it just feels great, you know? <laughs> okay, now, don't forget, we are still at 12 secrets. There's the 13th one, or 5th one in this level we need to find. There's a reason why we pulled that lever. Oh, pushed, actually. She's pushing them, not pulling them. The ear opening over here. Yeah, that was a great hair, if you remember. So this is what uh, Egyptian ears look like, apparently. And over here is an ancient recipe for uh, getting rid of earwax, by the way. So, you know, I'm going to pause here. You write it down in case you have some earwax issues. Good, you have it. Well done. And with that set, we actually even picked up our first box of um, the white shot shotgun I mean, ammunition. So, again, as I promised, I'm going to experiment with this a bit later on. Uh, to see what it really does you have to go to choose ammo select your ammo press enter and you can just exit or even press equip unfortunately you don't really see ammunition counter on the screen anywhere when using a weapon this is a major oversight they finally managed to show us the items we are picking up in the interface but not the ammunition this time I don't know what's going on it's very annoying. Uh, nevertheless, I'm gonna choose the normal one for now, and once we're gonna have a bit more white shot ammunition, about 20 shots at least, then I'm gonna do my experiment and, well, let you know the results, really. Now, with that in mind, let's uh, crawl inside the mouth. And before we make the final slide down its throat, which seems oddly inappropriate, I'm just again gonna take a quick peek at the statistics screen. So... There we go, the Tomb of Seth. So our distance travel keeps increasing enormously. And finally, we have some ammunition use statistics because we encountered, well, 20 enemies, in fact, which is quite quite a number for the first level. We have used no health packs, we have found all five secrets, and we have collected all 30 items. This, of course, includes the different supplies like health packs, flares, uh, the different weapons, the ammunition for said weapons, and the different key items. Uh, mind you, I don't consider the... Eye of Horrors, which resulted as a combination of the two pieces of the eye as a third key item. I consider each individual piece one key item and the Timeless Sand. So whatever we get out of combining items, I don't actually consider an extra item into statistic because later on in the game it's something we'll be able to do infinite amount of times, so it you know, wouldn't be really appropriate. So. Thank you very much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the first level as much as I did. Uh, no more Ahmed to steal our kills or set of traps for us. So it's just going to get more dangerous from this point on. And as promised, let me just make a save here. So we have something at the end of each level. And I will see you guys next time.